I'm Dr. Kimberly Watt, a hepatologist and transplant hepatologist at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota, here uh, to discuss a paper that we've recently had published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, May of 2010 edition. It's called Pain, Ma Pain Management in Cirrhotic Patients and the Clinical Challenge. Uh, this is a very common problem in the medical literature. There's very little guidance out there to help physicians and healthcare professionals alike. Uh, I'd like to first start off by reminding uh, all healthcare professionals and, and even uh, the general public that in, not all patients with cirrhosis are in fact alcoholic patients, uh, nor is their liver disease in any way related to alcohol. The vast majority of patients really are not. There are many different causes for liver disease and cirrhosis. Once a patient with cirrhosis develops any kind of pain that requires chronic analgesia, this becomes a very big problem uh, within the medical community as there is very little guidance on what we can do to treat these patients. Certainly acute pain or pain that happens very short term or transient is a little bit easier to treat and we've written a review article to help in guiding uh, physicians and all healthcare providers. For a patient with chronic liver disease without cirrhosis, you can use acetaminophen, low doses of anti-inflammatories or narcotics a little more liberally. Once a patient has cirrhosis though, acetaminophen would be the first line agent um, based on dosing written on the label and no more. And if they have severe cirrhosis or ev evidence of decompensation, lower dosing would be appropriate. Avoidance of anti-inflammatory medications is, uh, is very important and avoiding narcotics as much as possible and if needing to use them, limiting the dose, uh, lengthening the duration between dosing um, and overall trying to minimize uh, the use of narcotics is most appropriate. The use of acetaminophen in cirrhotic patients is the appropriate first choice analgesic. Most people uh, incorrectly choose anti-inflammatory medications rather than acetaminophen and this may in fact turn out to be more toxic to the patient as it can precipitate renal injury or kidney injury. This is a very uh, bad event to happen with a patient that has cirrhosis and can sometimes precipitate hepatorenal syndrome which can be a, very, a fatal complication. Some people, instead of taking acetaminophen, are re uh, resorting to narcotics, and as everybody knows, narcotics have a significant number of side effects, and in the cirrhotic patient, one of the most common precipitants of encephalopathy are actually sedatives and narcotics. Certainly, in some circumstances, acetaminophen is not going to be adequate analgesia in all cirrhotics, and the next uh, step for analgesia would be narcotics and there are some narcotics that are better tolerated than others and we refer to these in our, in our review article. Um, this will hopefully help provide some guidance but obviously minimization of narcotics uh, or narcotic use in the cirrhotic patient is ideal. There are other analgesic um, medications that are, are less commonly used, things such as tricyclic antidepressants or uh, other medications that we've also reviewed in this paper that are less commonly used but can be used safely uh, in cirrhotic patients in lower doses and less frequent dosing. It's always important to dose medications based on liver function as well as kidney function and these all have to be taken into account when you're dosing any analgesic or really any medication. I'd like to remind any patients out there or even physicians out there that you need to uh, make sure your, your practicing physicians know which medications you're taking, whether they're over-the-counter or herbal products, all included, as many of these can have combined effects together that can be to your detriment. Um, there are many side effects to herbal products and other over-the-counter medications that your physicians should certainly know about. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. 
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.